What's up guys, it's No Nonsense Know How again. And this video is gonna be a rapid fire overview of what's involved with replacing the cylinder head gasket on a Honda 1.7 liter engine. This happens to be on a 2004 Honda Civic. And this video is gonna be a little bit different than my normal approach because I was waiting on a couple parts still and so I had some downtime. I figured I would just slap everything back together and then Get, do a video where I'm just pulling parts off and showing you every nut and bolt and there's actually going to be a second part to this video as well because after talking to my machinist he convinced me it would be a good idea to replace the rings while I'm this far and Jen really wanted to do that too so I decided let's put her to work have her pop the oil pan off replace the uh, piston rings we hone the cylinders all that good stuff so uh, check out that second part I'll plug a link to it above and without further ado let's dive into what's involved with doing this uh, again it's kind of rapid fire and maybe a little scattered but here we go so let's take a brief look at some of the parts we're replacing a uh, quick note could you do this job without replacing the timing belt yes absolutely uh, i don't recommend doing that though because while you're in there you might as well do the job once and do it right so here's what i'm replacing we got both the alternator power steering belt a new radiator cap a thermostat and thermostat uh, seal. You got a new timing belt, water pump, comes with a tensioner, tensioner, bol tensioner bolt and spring, and of course the gasket for that. And we've got a Felpro head gasket kit, which comes with basically everything you need, including the new valve stem seals, which we'll go into that later. You got the exhaust gaskets, intake gaskets, and the head gasket is under here right there. That's what that looks like. Got valve cover gaskets. Uh, and all that good stuff. Now, I am replacing the cylinder head bolts as well. That's kind of an optional thing. I've seen people reuse them, but again, I like to overkill it and try to do it to the best of my ability from the get-go. Now, this Honda had 140,000 miles on it, and the problem is it, well, it kept overheating, and a few telltale signs that you have a blown head gasket are if you come to your uh, water bottle tank here, overflow, you see all that crud in there, black sludge, well, that's an indication that combustion gases are getting blown into your cooling system. Another quick check would be popping your radiator cap off, and if you see this all sludged up and melted on there, uh, that means same thing. One other quick check I'll mention for you, if you want to find out you definitely have a blown head gasket, is make sure your system's topped off with water or antifreeze. Put the cap on, of course, when the engine's cold. You have no pressure in your system. Now start the engine up and rev the engine couple times for like maybe 10 seconds 15 seconds snap that throttle a few times shut it off if when you're done doing that you come out and squeeze this hose and it has pressure or you relieve the uh, radiator cap and you have any pressure in there that's going to be a strong indicator that you have a blown head gasket all right now let's tear into this thing remember this is going to be for the more experienced DIYers or somebody that already knows how to use tools but let's just rush through this and get to that uh, that head gasket so we can go into the important stuff you're gonna start by setting your parking brake on the car and putting a chalk behind the rear wheel. Then to get a floor jack, come underneath and you're gonna jack it up on the steel part of the front subframe here, the front frame. Jack your car up and put your jack stands under and then relieve the jack. Make sure she's nice and sturdy, you can shake her and she don't fall on you. Then grab a drain pan and right on the bottom here you'll have your radiator petcock. You just crack that loose a few turns. Get your coolant draining and to assist in the flow, remove your radiator cap to break the vacuum. All right, I'm going to try keeping this GoPro on my head while we take this apart. We've got the hood in the full vertical position and I'm just using the prop rod on it. You could use this one too if you want. But disconnect your negative terminal. Should be 10 millimeter on there. This one has a 13 millimeter though, aftermarket. You can see this is the wrong battery in here too. But then go ahead and remove your five 10 millimeter head bolts from this intake resonator. One right down there too. And this plastic clip holding the wire harness on. You should then be able to finagle this on out of here. Now the two 10 mils on your air box and there will be a clamp holding it to the throttle body right here. That's a eight millimeter socket you'll need for that. And, and of course you have a hose connecting it to the valve cover. So pop that off. Good idea to stuff a paper towel into your throttle body and then remove your throttle cables. You got two of them on there and two 10 millimeter bolts that hold the bracket onto the intake. And then 
two 10 mils that go onto the valve cover right here and we can tuck our cables out of the way. This plastic cover here has got the quarter turn screws on them and then you're gonna start disconnecting all of your wire harnesses, uh, connectors from everything. You can see that goes all the way around down to your alternator. You have a 10 millimeter nut that goes onto the alternator, but this entire harness, it goes down toward your crank position sensor and all that good stuff too. You're gonna wanna start getting all of those off so you can tuck the entire harness out of your way. Remove your dipstick tube, or uh, and then each of the 10 mils from your coils. You got 10 millimeter nuts on those. Get them out of the way. You're gonna have two 10 mils on this steel bracket behind here, and then five 10 mils on your valve cover. And I slide that off. We'll do lots of jumping around, but continue working your way around two 10 mils on this bracket, two 10 mils on this steel bracket, and then you have a total of, I believe, five 12 millimeter nuts and bolts holding this coolant outlet housing on. But before you take those off, take your upper radiator hose off with these quick clamps and tie that out of your way. Same on your lower radiator hose, get those out. And then you also have a clamp on this one right here. So get this clamp off. And with all those off, you can slide your cooling outlet housing, we'll call it, out of the way. Now make note that this is your EGR valve right here and you should also remove this and clean out all the carbon from inside here. Great idea to do that and you also have a gasket, steel gasket that you're going to be replacing there. Let's set that over there. For your fuel rail you have one hose right here to take off and then spray some rust penetrant on each of the fuel injectors so it works down into these o-rings that slide into your EGR plate. Uh, you have two 10 millimeter nuts that hold that rail on and once you get those loose wiggle it back and forth and if you sprayed the rust penetrant on there it should be able to slide these off without the injectors popping off. Uh, probably not a terrible idea to relieve the fuel pressure first too but I didn't and it wasn't an issue. And now you can push your uh, injection rail over there and then you're going to have two 12 millimeters on this little block and the intake these are not easy to get to. You're going to have a bolt on each end and then a total of five nuts. These top ones look like this, one here and here. And then you're going to have three nuts on the bottom. Now I was able to get those three bottom nuts through right here with TSA, a 12 mil stubby, a ratcheting 12 mil, this cut off one and this. I had four wrenches and I was able to get those out no problem and use a magnet to fish them. With all of that off, you could take your vacuum hoses off too, but as long as you have all the electrical connections, your intake will slide back and off. Uh, I'm sorry, I failed to mention, there are th uh, three 12 millimeter head bolts that you're gonna have to get underneath. On these steel brackets down here, they bolt and stabilize the lower part of the intake to the engine block, so gotta get under for those. Uh, with that slid off, you can now slide your EGR plate off of here, if you get enough room. And I'm sorry, in between the head, you will have this steel EGR gasket. You can see how carboned up this gets. You should be able to replace this. I believe that comes with the kit. Uh, but inside of here, these EGR passages, you have to get in here with a screwdriver and get this very clean, because otherwise that will uh, cause trouble codes in the future. And now we're gonna come underneath with a jack, put a block of wood in between the oil pan and put neutral pressure up on the bottom of the engine. Not jacking it up, but just placing it onto it. And while you're down here, remove your two spring bolts holding the catalytic converter to your exhaust. These are 15 millimeter, but yours may have 14 mils on them. And then behind that, you will have one 14 millimeter that's connecting the lower part of your catalytic converter to a little bracket down here. Had to use a 14 millimeter ratcheting wrench to get to that. Of course, spray those down with rust penetrant too. Now back up top, slide your power steering reservoir off and then take the two 17 millimeter nuts and three 14 millimeter bolts off of your motor mount. Get the motor mount up and now you can jack this engine up and have a little bit more uh, free play with it. So with that jacking motion, you'll now be able to get both of your belts off, power steering and alternator belts. And I don't think I need to show you all those. You're just gonna need 12 millimeter 
ratcheting wrench and 14 millimeters on those. But once you take them off, just tuck that out of the way without removing the hoses. And same thing on your alternator. It's got a big 14 millimeter bolt going through it. And then just one adjustment on the bottom, which is a 12 millimeter nut. Power steering bracket, you're gonna have a few 10 millimeters on it, one holding this AC line on, and three 14 millimeter bolts. Take that off, and take the three 10 millimeter bolts from your upper timing cover, remove that. To remove your catalytic converter, you have your two O2 sensor connections, a couple ground cables up here on 10 mil bolts too, and remove the five 12 millimeter bolts and nuts holding it onto the head. Now I will tell you, there's usually a heat shield that goes over this, but you can see somebody's cut that off. So if you do have the heat shield, just remove the 10 millimeters below it if they're not rusted to hell, and then slide that out of your way. I'm now gonna drop the engine down a little bit and you will work your way to the bottom. So two plastic clips holding this little shroud on. And here is the infamous Honda bolt. So most impact guns cannot take this bolt off, uh, half inch impact guns. I sometimes use an Ingersoll Rand 261 three quarter inch gun and that will zip them right off. But so, like usual, my gun couldn't take it off. But here's one technique that really works great for you. Uh, spray rust penetrant around this whole thing and then take an air hammer if you have one like this and hit the center of the bolt with the air hammer for like five seconds. Those vibrations will break the bond between that bolt and the crankshaft, and then it zipped right out for me. Of course, I already have all this stuff loose, obviously, like I disclosed in the beginning of the video. If that doesn't work for you, they do make a special holding tool like this that you can get on Amazon. Again, I'll plug links to all this stuff below. Uh, but this goes right on there, and they sell a thick socket, thick-walled socket that goes in and kind of multiplies the torque force. So those are great options as well, but... Uh, get that bolt off usually these will just uh, come right off without being seized on now note the keyway is in here and that actually fell out when i was doing mine so make sure not to lose your keyway now i did fail to mention before you remove that crankshaft pulley make sure to spin it so that the notch on your lower time cover is lined up with the notch on the crankshaft uh, pulley you'll i'll show you that when i take it off and that your cam says up where it's facing up and a notch right here and a notch right here are perfectly level with the top of the cylinder head. That means your engine is properly timed. So with that, you would take your crank pulley off and here are the notches I'm talking about, the one big notch by itself, that is the TDC mark. It means you're at top dead center. Now this lower timing cover is held on with, I believe it was three or four 10 millimeters, but you can see this one's severely damaged because uh, the side the brackets broke off and I have a new one on order for this. So if yours looks this way and your gasket's all swelled, definitely replace the lower timing cover. It's only like a $30 part and uh, not worth trying to salvage that one. Now remove the, I believe, five 14 millimeter head bolts from your alternator bracket. And that's what that looks like. You got two here and three on the front side. Set that next to your alternator. By the way, if you're taking this apart yourself, it's not a bad idea to stack things in the order they come off of and uh, maybe take pictures and videos as you're doing it. Now we're gonna take the tying belt off. So start by removing this spring, that this uh, tying belt spring, I don't know if you can see that, right here will be attached to that tower. Remove that and then the 14 millimeter on your tensioner, which then your tensioner pulley will come out the bottom. Of course, we're gonna be replacing that. You can now slip your belt off. This actually has a factory Honda belt in it. Look at that, and a factory Honda pump too. But on the bottom, you can remove the uh, crankshaft position sensor or just slide the entire, usually you can slide the entire pulley off the bottom. And of course that is also keyed with a non-removable key, so you can't put that on backwards. Behind that, is a washer. Now this washer is very important that it goes in with the beveled edge, the part that goes like that, just like that. So it's pretty self-explanatory. You wouldn't put it on this way so the cupped edge is facing the belt. You make it so the bevel edge, smooth, smooth part toward the belt when you put that back on. And then the four 10 millimeter bolts holding your water pump on. You will definitely want to have an oil pan under there when you do that because a lot more coolant's going to come out. And that's what that looks like. 
12 mil bolt on your camshaft pulley. That's also keyed, can only go on one way. And this gets torqued back down to 27 foot pounds when you put it on. Just one more 10 mil on this inner timing cover and a 10 mil holding your camshaft position sensor onto the side of the head. We're now ready to remove the cylinder head and I'm sure I forgot to mention a couple clips and bolts and hoses like this on the bottom of your intake, but that's the majority of all the components. Now for the important stuff. When you remove this cylinder head, it's very important to loosen these bolts in three separate stages. So you start on the outside and work your way in, something like this. 14 millimeter head on these, there's gonna be 10 bolts. And you go quarter turn on that one, quarter turn on this one. You work over here, quarter turn, quarter turn. Now to this stage here, here, quarter turn, quarter turn. Now to the center, quarter turn, quarter turn. You're gonna repeat that in three stages until all these bolts are loose. Otherwise you risk warping or cracking the head. Could you zip them right off and it'd be fine? Probably yes, but that's the way uh, any manufacturer is gonna recommend removing the head. In fact, I actually just went online and my sequence is a little bit off. It really should be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But I've seen people do it both ways. It's important to note while we're on this subject, when you're torquing the new bolts down, it's gonna be the reverse of that. So you're gonna start in the center, it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so on. You're gonna do that in three stages when you put it together. It's gonna be 14 foot pounds on the first stage, 36 foot pounds on the second stage, and 49 foot pounds on the final torque. You also, I failed to mention, are supposed to put a light coating of motor oil on these threads, but not so much where when you drop them down, it's getting in between the cylinder head and the head gasket. That wouldn't be good. So that should be all the information you need to know on the, the torque wise, the bolts of the head. Anyway, with those bolts off, we're now ready to slide the head off. So you do that quite simply by grabbing it. You might have to hit it with a mallet or something, but be very careful with that and place it in a safe place. Don't go setting this down on the ground because you still have your cams in place and that means some of the valves may be open like these exhaust ones right here, the intakes, and you could very easily bend those. You could see the dowel pins came with the head. So when you're putting this back down, those dowel pins are gonna slide right back into the block right here. A step you cannot skip is checking for warpage on your cylinder head. So a way of doing that is getting a machinist flat or they can be called other things, but this is a machinist roller that's perfectly flat within the thousands. You can get them on Amazon too. Again, I'll plug links to that kind of stuff, but you set it across going this way, this way, and sometimes across the center too, and across back here. And I always start by taking a flashlight and looking for any light in between. And if you see light, like I do right there, uh, well, let me just note here, before you do this, you would want to acetone this whole thing off and get this grease off, because obviously that's going to affect your results quite a bit. But if you do see light, get a set of feeler gauges, and the spec, Honda spec on this is anything over two thousandths. If you can slip two thousandths under there, then you have to get this resurfaced. There's just no sense in throwing a fresh head gasket in without checking the block or head for warpage. Because this is a multi-layer steel gasket, and yeah, you have these nice perma-dry seals around here, but if those surfaces are warped by more than two or three thousandths, it's more than likely gonna blow again in the future. Probably the near future. And that brings me to another point. This is a Felpro Made in USA Permatorque MLS multi-layer steel gasket. I definitely recommend going with a quality brand, if not an OEM gasket. Well, actually, I honestly would go with a Felpro over OEM because I think these just seal a little bit better than the factory, clearly, because that thing only lasted 140,000 miles. But um, do not get one of those Chinese knockoff ones on eBay. Yeah, they're cheap. You get a whole kit for like 40, 50 bucks or whatever it is. But I've seen people use those personally, and uh, they fail. I had one guy at my work use one. It lasted two months. Of course, he didn't redeck the block or anything either, but I would go with a quality gasket. Now, I'm bringing this to the machine shop to get it redone anyway, because I'd rather be one and done. You know, it's a lot of work to get in here. And this car's actually been burning oil, and if you look in the exhaust ports, you can see, oh, you can see uh, oil's been trickling down some of the valve stems, and this, this car does eat valve, uh, eat oil a little bit. These are my valve seals here, and yes, I could replace these myself, 
but I have the tools to do it properly, but uh, I'd rather just bring this to a machine shop since he deals with these every day. Now I did read off the, these Hondas are known for having bad valve guides too, so when he takes these out, he'll check the valve guides and all that good stuff and get this cleaned up real nice. Gonna bring it over to Pendel Performance. He's always done good work and I've never had any problems. Another step when this is off is also setting the valve lash. The intake side will be seven to nine thousandths and the exhaust side is nine thousandths to eleven thousandths is the uh, spec on that. All this work for a $30 gasket, right? And I'm sure some of you guys are thinking, why not just slide a new gasket in there and call a day? Well, the answer is I don't wanna ever have to, I, I wanna at least say I did the best I could do. Now I already cleaned this surface up with acetone and then I took my flat edge, went across and checked for block warpage. These, again, these blocks I've read are notorious for block warpage, and mine was a, a little bit out, so I'll show you what I did. You take your dowel pins out, rotate the crankshaft so all four pistons are about halfway down the bore, stuff some paper towels in there to try to reduce any sediment or abrasives getting into the cylinders. I mean, this ain't a race motor, so I'm not getting too crazy with it. And then I take a machinist block like this, and this is perfectly flat, could, could use a lot of things for this though, and you take some really fine grit emery cloth and just run this across the block like so a few times. And when I did that, you could see it was making contact on the cylinders and it did take a little bit of material off on the outside, but not very much. I did that maybe five, six times and it was good to go. So I'm gonna call that happy and good. Obviously have to clean it off before putting it back together though. In case you're not familiar with head gaskets, they can fail in many different ways, but this is essentially sealing an explosion, a high pressure area from the cooling system. So what happened on this Honda is you had high pressure combustion gases blowing by, pressurizing the cooling system, which obviously your coolant surrounds these cylinders. A few of the other ways they can leak are the oil passages may start trickling out the edge, or you might have coolant work its way into the cylinder and then you're burning coolant and getting white smoke out of the back. And these gaskets get installed dry, completely dry. But one tip I'll give you, I have in the past actually run very tiny slight beads of right stuff silicone around the entire edge, basically on the gasket, just like a pinch worth around the entire thing. Not a pinch, but just a tiny smear on both sides. And that can reduce any uh, coolant leakage or oil leakage externally on these. And sometimes you have warpage on the block and if you want to be safe and sorry, you know, use a touch of silicone around the exterior, but make sure that goes nowhere near these, uh, the high temperature areas of the cylinders. Another worthy mention is you should definitely replace your crankshaft seal and the camshaft seal above. A lot of methods of removing these, but generally if you take a self-tapping screw and you drill it into it and then grab that with pliers, you can remove it. Just make sure not to score or scratch your crankshaft. Of course, you can check out other videos on how to replace a crankshaft seal if you like. Well, geez, I think that pretty much covers most of it. I know that was a little scattered and rambling on, but I hope this video serves to help somebody out and if anything, give you some insight on what's involved with the job. Because I've heard some people say, oh, you know, they quoted me $1,500 to do a head gasket and I looked it up, it's only a $40 part or whatever the case. And it's like, yeah, I mean, no, there's a lot of labor involved and you're replacing more than just a head gasket when you do this job, if you do it right. So, you know, drop me a thumbs up, comment below. Like I said, check out the channel, maybe subscribe if it did help you, because I appreciate that. And if you've got any in input for me or suggestions, uh, feel free to let me know. I figure there's a bunch of other videos where people show you how to take every little nut and bolt off, and this could go on for an hour, two hours, if I just put my camera on my head. But instead, I think uh, I feel like I just wanted to put a, a video out that had all the general knowledge to give you an overview of the job. So. Hopefully you found it useful. I'll again make sure to plug the links down below to everything you've seen in this video. Uh, so check that out. And uh, well, he picked a good time to start making noise. And uh, till next time, this is Chris Brown here. No nonsense, no how. And hopefully I'll see you in another video. Peace. Love that sound.